The President, please be seated. The court is now in session. During this morning session, the chamber proceeds. The cases are uh, case zero zero two. While pronouncing the oral decision and another decision. The purpose of today's hearing is indeed for the trial chamber to announce its disposition of its decision on the accused Nunjia fitness to stand trial. After the chamber has conducted the hearing to hear the testimonies of two experts, Professor John Campbell and uh, Sina Fazel on the 25th of March 2013. The two experts have been reappointed uh, to assess or to review the health and fitness of the stand trial of Mr. Noon Chi. And another issue here is of the severance of the proceedings in light in the light of the Supreme Court Chamber's decision of the eighth of February two thousand and thirteen. The Chamber today also announces uh, the resumption of the proceedings in K zero zero two in order to safeguard the right of all accused to a fair expeditious trial and the interest of justice in reaching a timely verdict in this trial. Court officer is now instructed to report to the chamber the current status of the parties to the proceedings. Rather, the greffe uh, is now instructed to report on this. The greffe Mr. President and Your Honours, all parties to the proceedings are present except Mr. Nun Chia, who is absent due to his health concerns. Mr. Nun Chia has waived his right to be present in today's hearing. Mr. Jacques Berges, uh, counsel for Mr. Kilson Pond, is absent due to his personal commitment. The President, uh, thank you, Ms. Sakovati. Next, uh, the Chamber would like uh, to announce its deposition of its decision as follow. Notwithstanding the advanced stage, and frailty of the accused Nun Chi and the accused precarious physical health, the recent report and testimony of the court appointed medical experts clearly indicate that the accused remains capable of meaningful participation in his own defense. On the basis of the conclusions of the medical expert, the trial chamber therefore affirms its earlier finding that the accused Nun Chi is fit to stand trial. The trial chamber's written decision in this regard will follow as soon as possible. Trial Chamber now issues its deposition of its decision on severance of case 002 stroke 01. 
following Supreme Court chamber decision of the 8th of February 2013. The chamber's recent written decision on this matter will also follow as soon as possible. On the 8th of February 2013, the Supreme Court Chamber rendered its decision on the co-prosecutor's immediate appeal of the trial chamber's decision concerning the scope of case 002-01. In its severance order of the 22nd of September 2011, the trial chamber in the interests of achieving a timely verdict in case 002 had limited the scope of the first trial in case 002 principally to forced evacuations, later extending it also to executions carried out at Tuol Po Chirai. The Supreme Court Chamber decision annulled the trial chamber's severance order and related decisions. Although the Supreme Court Chamber decision envisaged the possibility of a fresh severance of case 002, the immediate consequence of the Supreme Court Chamber decision was that Case 002 was no longer confined in scope and the trial chamber unable to proceed to any verdict in this case until all factual allegations and charges contained in the case 002 closing order are adjudicated. In annulling the severance of case 002, the Supreme Court Chamber considered the trial chamber to have erred in its interpretation of the scope of its discretion to order severance pursuant to Internal Rule 89 Ter. In failing to hear the parties prior to the issuance of its severance order and for having, among other factors, given inadequate consideration to the need to ensure that the charges retained in case file 002-01 are sufficiently representative. In order to minimize further delay to proceedings in case 002, on the 12th of February 2013, the trial chamber scheduled hearings on the issue of severance, outlining a number of issues for the parties to address in the light of the Supreme Court Chamber decision. Following these hearings on the 18th, 20th, and 21st of February 2013, in court examination of the court appointed medical experts who reassessed the fitness to stand trial of the accused Nun Chia on the 25th of March 2013. And, 13, and having weighed the factors identified in the Supreme Court Chamber decision and the impact of the death of Ying Sari, the Chamber issues its pre
present decision. For the reasons that we uh, that will be outlined in its written decision, the trial chamber decides to sever case 002 pursuant to Internal Rule 89 by confining the scope of case 002-01 to the charges related to force movement of population phases 1 and 2 and executions at Tuol Po Chirai. These are the uh, brief oral decisions uh, by the trial chamber. The chamber has no other issue to raise uh, during this morning so the chamber will adjourn this hearing as of now and uh, the proceedings regarding case file 002 will be resumed on Monday next week, uh, rather on the 8th of April 2013. During the week commencing 8th of April 2013, the trial chamber intends to conclude the testimony of TCW 100 followed by the examination of TCW 536. The co-prosecutors have already been given the time to put questions uh, to one of the witnesses, and it is now time for the lead co-lawyers to proceed with uh, the questioning of uh, the party uh, of the witness and lead call lawyers will have uh, one session for that which is uh, equivalent to one fourth of the given time for putting the question to the witness regarding TCW 100 His testimony was partly, partly heard uh, during the session on January 2013. His next uh, testimony was uh, scheduled for on the 14th of January 2013. Nonetheless, uh, due to the medical condition of Mr. Nguyen Chia, who had to be admitted to the hospital on that occasion, the chamber could not uh, hear the complete testimony of TCW 100. So uh, the questions uh, were put uh, by the prosecutors to the witness, but other parties uh, were not uh, yet given the opportunity to do so due to the outlined uh, condition. And after TCW 100, uh, there will be the examination of TCW 536. Scheduled to hear the testimony of this witness was set, but uh, due to the health concerns of the accused, uh, the chamber could not uh, hear his or uh, uh, this witness uh, testimony. The chamber now plans uh, to hear the testimony of TCW 536 uh, before the Khmer New Year.
The trial chamber will hear this uh, witness for two days and a half. Questions continued. Questions to be put uh, by the judges of the bench, then followed uh, by parties uh, to the proceedings. The chamber wishes to inform the parties to the proceedings that the chamber will do its best to make sure that the proceedings are conducted in K002 stroke 01 as scheduled and the following hearings unless the chamber is faced by other challenges including the availability of essential Cambodian staff who may not show up at work or perhaps uh, due to budget uh, shortfalls or other relevant issues. The Chamber will notify the parties as well concerning the scheduling of the hearing by the first week of April. I now would like to hand over to Judge Silver Cartwright uh, to continue uh, informing the public uh, and the parties of the proceeding if uh, she would wish to do so. Yes, uh, thank you, President. Uh, the trial chamber has scheduled the resumption of hearing of the evidence for the 8th of April, uh, given that uh, as of last night uh, it was very unclear whether essential Cambodian staff would be available uh, next week. Uh, the um, coordinator of UNICART has just this morning informed uh, the international judges that funding for um, the national staff has been secured uh, through to the end of April uh, and that uh, ongoing um, uh, discussions are uh, underway to stabilize fa funding from that point on. Uh, it is uh, unfortunately too late for us to schedule any witnesses for next week uh, for a variety of reasons and we therefore prefer to stay with the uh, schedule indicated to the parties yesterday, which is 8th of April, as the um, President has uh, indicated. Uh, and, uh, President, I think you wanted to say some other comments about um, uh, schedules uh, of witnesses and experts from the parties, or would you prefer me to mention that issue? Yes, the, uh, the final matter that the trial chamber wanted to communicate to the parties is this. The chamber will seek further submissions from the parties concerning witnesses and experts to be heard in the weeks following the 8th of April, should it consider this is required to enable it to discharge its trial management functions. Pending any such request by the trial chamber, the parties should not file further suggested witness and expert lists or proposed schedules for the ongoing hearing in case 002-001. President, I think that covers all the uh, issues that uh, were required for this morning. The President. Thank you. Judge Laverne, you may now proceed. I just want to make a little clarification for French speakers. The chamber 
is asking the parties not to make any submissions regarding expert witnesses. It will do so if it deems it necessary subsequently. The President, thank you, Chacha Lavang. The Chamber would like to adjourn the hearing now, and the next session will be resumed on Monday, the 8th of April 2013, commencing at 9 a.m. Security personnel are now instructed to bring Mr. Kilson Pond back to the detention facility and have both accused persons return to the courtroom by Monday, the 8th of April 2013, before 9 a.m. The court is adjourned. Some croucher.